Vibe coding has a problem. You ever notice how every vibe coding demo and tutorial has a common theme? They start from scratch and they spin up this amazing looking project in 30 seconds and everyone goes, wow! And then your mind kind of extrapolates the possibilities for your own app. What happens when you vibe code something that you actually want to keep and you want to iteratively work on while keeping it stable, tested, secure, and production ready? Whatever approach you take to writing the code itself via like a low code tool like Flutterflow or spec driven development with something like GitHub's new spec kit, or just vanilla spray and pray vibe coding. And regardless of your experience level with coding, I think the trade-off between abstraction and flexibility is becoming more clear for everyone. If you want your app to do something truly unique and advanced, you must inherently get closer to the code itself or at the very least, know where the code lives. There are so few truly industry standard tools that are used by almost every software professional. There are something like 30 million software engineers in the world, and GitHub has something like 150 million users. And that means that 500% of developers are using GitHub. Either that or everyone is on GitHub. GitHub will let you review your code changes, create experimental branches, have teammates collaborate and comment on code, run automated testing, auto-deploy to production, create sandbox environments, run recurring tasks, integrate with a plethora of third-party services, and so much more. But to understand the mysteries of GitHub, we must first talk about Git. Let's pop open a terminal and go through three basic Git commands. Now I know what you're going to say, but John, my AI slash no code tool can handle all the Git commands. Why are you still typing them into the terminal like a dinosaur? Because I think Git needs to be your boundary. You can write all the AI slop you want, but when you start interacting with Git is the point where you take control. Use the AI for syntax? Absolutely. Of course, it's not the memorizing the commands itself that's important. The reason that I think that you should execute them yourself is that you understand what they're doing in the grand scheme of things. That's how you take control of your code. If your AI tool makes a mess on any given day, is it really such a good idea to trust the AI tool blindly to clean it up? Oftentimes you'll use a template or something like that, so you won't always have to init the repo. But when you start a new repo, you will start with a main branch. In VS Code, untracked files will show up as green. Most repos will have .env and .gitignore. .env gets included in .gitignore. It's fundamental that you understand this rather than just trusting it to the AI. Because this is where all the vibe coding security holes appear. You put your secret keys into .env, you put .env into gitignore, and you won't have a problem with security. Now my git status shows two files. Not three, it doesn't see .env, that's the whole point. First important command, git add everything in the current directory. That stage is my two files. Second command, git commit. Add anything that's been modified, add a message, initial commit. And so now, in VS Code, the files show in white and not in green. The whole point of all of this coloring is so that when you use something like Claude Code to build out your whole website or application, you can explicitly see all of the changes that Claude Code has made and where it's made those changes. When it comes to a production application, you need to have a really good idea as to what code has been changed, what files have been added, and more importantly, what really shouldn't have been there. Okay, back to my dinosaur terminal. So what have I got? I've got a modified index.html file and a whole bunch of new files. git add, git commit, and the third command is git checkout. I won't go deep into branching, I can make another tutorial on that some other time, but the point I want to make is that you should consciously be aware of what branch you're on rather than entrusting it to the AI. So now I've got two branches and this code base is ready for GitHub. In GitHub, you create a new repository, hit create, and here you can just copy the commands. This one connects your local repo to the one on GitHub. This one pushes what you've got to GitHub. So when I run that now, what I have locally and what I have on GitHub are connected. I'm now going to show you the workflow that basically every software engineer uses on a daily basis, and that will absolutely level up the stability of your AI coded apps. 
Main is your super stable production version of your application. You don't write code on main. Instead, you check out feature branches. Once you've branched off of main, you can do whatever the hell you want. So in VS Code, I can now see that index.html has been changed by Claude Code. It's also added this scripts folder with this theme.js file. And it's made some modifications as well to the styles folder. Now here is a key feature of GitHub. First of all, git add and git commit. This was a dark mode. Okay, I'm gonna push this branch up to GitHub. So instead of pushing main like I did before, the origin's GitHub and the branch is this my market disrupting feature branch. Now GitHub is gonna know about that branch and it's gonna offer to create something called a pull request. If I control click this link, it will open the pull request in the browser. This is a bunch of code that I intend to merge into my main production branch. So instead of stuffing a whole bunch of stuff into main and hoping that it works, I can actually analyze the difference between main and the new branch. This is where your human eyes come in. You gotta see what code is being merged into your production code base. That's how you start building sustainable, stable code. It depends on you how much you're actually going to understand about the code that's been added, but the more you can understand it, the more you can see, hey, the AI has done something really strange here. I better go back and prompt it some more. The difference between that and just blindly accepting whatever the AI gives you, that's a muscle that you can build regardless of your coding experience. So I create the pull request so that it's ready to be merged into main. And at that point, I can actually run certain things. I can connect to third parties like Supabase, I can run unit tests, and I can even do development deployments and create staging environments. I do that using something called GitHub Actions. So I'm gonna tell the AI to build me a YAML file for GitHub Actions, and I'll explain what that means in one second. Okay, so now this thing is super powerful. Basically what happens is that you spin up a server in GitHub's cloud and it does something, and the things that it can do are pretty bottomless. You can inject secret variables, you can deploy apps to production, you can deploy pull requests to staging environments, you can set up recurring cron jobs, you can trigger things from pull requests, from pushes at different branches, you can even upload app bundles to the app stores, and you get 2,000 minutes of this free. This is the makings of what we call a CI-CD pipeline, that's continuous integration and continuous deployment. So git add and git commit, and then git push up to github pushing not to main but to this feature branch and that'll actually update the same pull request what happens now in github is that we have an action that's been queued and like i said these could be deploys to production deploys to staging environment running unit tests pushing to the app stores these actions are incredibly powerful once you're happy with the code that you've written and the changes that have been made in this branch you take your feature and you merge it into main by merging the pull request. After that, I normally delete the branch and then you can either automatically or manually deploy your new version of main, your new stable code to production. And last but not least, get your local machine up to date with GitHub. Git pull from the origin, which is GitHub from the main branch. If you're finding the content helpful, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. It really does help the channel to grow. And if you have questions about GitHub or anything else, just drop them into the comment below. I really do try to answer as many comments as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.